seen on your screens and what a month it has been. Certainly the S&P 500 biggest monthly rally in more than three years. The Nasdaq on a tear. Tech outperforming today on the back of Facebook. Strong numbers. Apple relief. Tech continues to grind higher. So do two emerging markets. And indeed the currencies here. The MSCI emerging market currency. Best month in a year. Hmm. It's a bit of a turn here for the emerging markets. Uh, we're starting to see convergence once again after months and months of divergence. Uh, of course, we're also looking at Bitcoin continuing to sink lower. It's been a pretty ugly couple of months for Bitcoin and digital currencies. Couple of months, six months of losses now. The longest run on record for Bitcoin since data stretching back to 2010. And we have a round number here for the S&P 500. 2,700, uh, the S&P getting ready to close out its best month since October of 2015. Uh, the encouraging corporate earnings, a dovish Fed, mm -hmm. all of it helping to lift uh, equities, especially those that are considered more growthy or on the riskier side. You mentioned EM. It's the, we're also seeing the same kind of bullishness for equities in EM. Uh, Treasury is also interestingly higher too, nine tenths of one percent for TLT. Facebook, one of those results that have given investors a little bit more reason to dip their toe back into risk. Now, of course, another reason why you're seeing green in equities is because of anticipation around the U.S.-China trade talks. The second day of those high-level trade negotiations negotiations, there we go, are wrapping up in Washington as President Trump heads into a meeting right now with Vice Premier Liu He. The president addressed the ongoing talks earlier and he signaled a not too distant deadline. I think we can do it by March 1st. Uh, can you get it down on paper by March 1st? I don't know. I can say on March 1st, uh, the tariff on China goes to 25 percent. Uh, and that's a big tariff. For more now, we want to welcome Hoover Institution Research Fellow Lonnie Chen. Lonnie, what do we know about what each side brought to the table in this round of talks? I mean, we know that both were willing to get something done. Both have seen the impact of the, the, the amped up rhetoric and the tariffs, at least in China's case. What did both come in willing to do? Well, the fact that both sides were willing to show up at the table is an accomplishment in and of itself, Scarlett. I think the fact that they were willing to sit down and have this discussion is an important step. I think for the Chinese, uh, they, were come, uh, they, they came willing to give on the current account deficit, willing to make commitments to buy more American product. They came to make some concessions, relatively modest as they might be, on the industrial policy elements, for example, on IP theft and forced technology transfer. And on the American side, there was a willingness, first of all, to say, look, we're going to hold off on, uh, on imposing these tariffs come March 1st, and potentially on our end, we're also willing to talk about uh, greater Chinese investment in the United States. So both sides, I think, came to this in good faith. The question is going to be how much of this is acceptable to President Xi and to President Trump. Lani, I want to get your take. I asked sort of our previous guest, Henry Fernandez and others, but notably I want to get your take on where the power play lies right now. I'm looking at reports from Bloomberg that 440 Chinese companies have just disclosed that their profits were worse than previously expected in 2018. We've had manufacturing data still sub-50 coming out of China. Meanwhile, U.S. looks like we're turning around a little bit. We've got a supportive Fed. Whose wind are in which sales? Well, I, I think the wind is definitely at, at the back of the United States. Uh, China unquestionably has some serious uh, economic question marks as we go forward. Obviously, they've seen growth sag. As you reported, there's a number of uh, companies that are probably in deeper trouble than we originally thought. So I, I do think the Chinese clearly need a deal here. The, the Americans, though, uh, there are some reasons to believe that a deal will favor, uh, will be important for the United States as well. First of all, for President Trump, politically, it's unclear whether these tariffs are going to continue to play to his advantage. And the closer we get to the 2020 election, I think the more it works in President Trump's favor to get some sort of deal as well. So both sides uh, have something to gain by making a deal, but the Chinese probably have a little more to gain. Hmm. Now, uh, we spoke with Henry Fernandez, the MSCI chairman and CEO, a little bit earlier about the way forward on these trade discussions. Take a listen to what he said on where things stand. I think the, uh, the issue of purchases by the Chinese of American goods uh, is clearly the easiest one, whether farm products or energy products or whatever. I think the thorny issues are clearly the issue of transfer of, of technology and secondly the access to the market on a level playing field by U.S. competitors into China. But I think an area that is often neglected uh, by observers is that uh, is, is compliance. So compliance, Alani, is the issue. In their zeal, in the urgency to be able to get something done, a deal done, and be able to declare victory, 
Have they gotten to this level of detail on compliance? Is this something that could kind of trip everything up? Well, compliance is always one of those things where, particularly on the Chinese side, they'll make claims regarding a compliance regime and they'll say, look, we're willing to do X, Y, and Z to ensure that this agreement is enforced. It's very difficult to tell whether the compliance actually happens, whether they actually do what they say they're going to do uh, for many months and in some cases many years. So I, I think it's fair to say that compliance is an issue that's lurking in the background, but there's not frankly a whole lot that we can do on our end to confirm or assure uh, that these things are going on until some time has passed. So it's an issue. Obviously, negotiators want to do their best to ensure that there are safeguards in place, but we're not going to know the efficacy of those safeguards for some time. And he, what's the key thing you're going to be looking for in these discussions or the key um, statement coming out, words to watch for when we have the end of these talks? I think there's a few things. First of all, we, we want to have assurance that there will be additional conversations because I doubt that we're going to see some breakthrough deal here. I think they will have made some progress on a few issues. But the first thing is we want to hear that there's continuing momentum towards some kind of deal ahead of March 1st. The other thing is we might want some more certainty on when the Xi-Trump sit-down is going to yes. happen. Some have suggested it's going to happen right around the North Korean summit, the planned North Korean summit at the end of February. That would be a good time if the president finds himself in Asia to sit down with President Xi in Beijing. So I think we want a little more clarity regarding what that Xi-Trump interaction is going to look like. And I want to pick up right where you left off. Is the outcome of that Kim summit going to influence the U.S.-China trade discussions when she and Trump meet later on because early on in President Trump's administration each side wanted to use North Korea as some kind of leverage. Yeah, I think that discussion in some ways has sort of moved into a, onto a different plane. No doubt it will still influence the U.S.-China discussion. But fundamentally, the negotiators on the North Korea side have been working hard uh, to, uh, to achieve some sort of resolution now for the better course of the last several months up to a year. I tend to see those discussions being somewhat separate from what's going on now in the U.S.-China economic matter. The biggest reason being that we've got to have some kind of resolution before March 1st, and the North Korea time timeline may drag on longer. Mm. Great perspective, as always. We thank you for joining us. Hoover Institution Research Fellow Li Han Chen there from Stanford. Coming up, making it permanent. Intel's interim CEO takes the top job, but are investors happy? Mm, not too bad. This is Bloomberg. By 2004, I had done well for myself, but I didn't feel well. I'd always been a diet soda drinker, but I realized they're full of diet sweeteners. I forced myself to switch to plain water. Within weeks, my skin was looking healthier, I had more energy, and I had finally lost the weight that I was looking to lose. But I was really getting bored of plain water. A slice of fruit helped add some flavor, but when I looked for a simple flavored water in stores, I realized that everything had diet sweeteners or some sort of sugar. So I started Hint to help everyone fall in love with water. At Hint, we infuse water with delicious fruit essences. No diet sweeteners, no sugar, and no calories. Just great taste. For a limited time, new customers can get three cases of our top three flavors for just a dollar per bottle. Plus, get free shipping and a free limited edition Hint tote bag if you order now. Drink water, not sugar. Go to drinkhint.com to try Hint water now. Fitness. The same machines, celebrity trainers, and pre-packaged workouts. How can something designed for everyone be the right fit for you? It can't. And that's why I'm here. I am Max, the artificial intelligence driving the new Bowflex Max trainer machine. I'm the coach that turns this low-impact, full-body, time-saving cardio machine into a truly personalized fitness experience. How personal? Well, let's start with your goals, and then I'll learn your capabilities. Can you give me one more? So I can adapt each day with personalized workouts unique to you and you and you. Some starting in only four minutes, all designed to help you become stronger, fitter, and healthier for the ones you love and the things you love to do. I am Max, 